Welcome to this short tutorial of Open Buildings Designer Connect Edition. In this video, we will go through an overview of how to work and quickly design a building with this application. After opening Open Buildings Designer, we can see the welcome screen, as you can see here. First, let's create a workspace. You can consider a workspace as a container for projects, which are called worksets. We will explain more about that in a bit. For now, you can consider a workspace to be a collection of similar projects based on type, client, location, or any other organizational subdivision. In this example, we'll be creating a new workspace called My Workspace for our building. To create the new workspace, we can click on the Workspaces drop-down that is showing the currently selected workspace, then click on Create Workspace. We would need to provide a name for this workspace, which in this case is My Workspace, and a description. You can see the location of the Workspace root folder here. You can use the default path or browse to a new location. Note, there are also fields for Worksets folder path, which will contain the Worksets, Standards folder path, which will contain the workspace specific standard libraries, and the subfolders that will be there in the Standards folder. For now, we will keep the default values for these fields and click OK to create the workspace. Since we already know the path to the workspace, we can now open it in Windows Explorer. Note that by default, the workspaces and their contents are created in the configuration folder, which is generally under C, Program Data, Bentley, Open Buildings Connect Edition. So we go to the workspaces folder and then my workspace. In the worksets folder, you can see that there are no worksets here, as we have not created any. So before we create any workset, we would need to bring a template in this folder. For that, we can go to the Building Examples workspace and from there, we can select a template project. Depending on your installation, you might have one or multiple templates. Here, I am selecting the Building Template NM, which stands for Neutral Metric. Doing this will also make sure that we fetch all our standards from the delivered NM dataset. Along with the template folder, we need to select the CFG and the DGNWS file for that template. We can press Ctrl and click to do that. Then copy them from here and paste in the Worksets folder of our workspace. After that is done, we need to reopen Open Buildings so that the Worksets in the workspace are recognized by the program. After reopening, when we select My Workspace as the current workspace, we can see that the NM template workset is already there in that workspace, and that is the template that we pasted in the Worksets folder. Now we create a new workset called My Workset by clicking on the drop down and selecting Create Workset. Now in the drop down for template, we have the building template to start our workset with. We put the name, description, and select the template for this workset. Keeping all other values as default, we click OK to create our workset. Once the workset is created, we can click on the New File button and create a new file. In this case, let's remove the empty.dgn file and name our new file my building. Now let us take a look at the graphical user interface of the application. Towards the top left, we have the file button, which leads us to the backstage menu. This menu has a few handy options, which we will discuss in a different video. Just to the top right of the file button, we have the workflow dropdown. We can select the workflow that we want to work on from this dropdown. Here, the most notable workflows are building design, which we will be using the most, modeling for general 3D modeling, and drawing for general 2D drawings. If we go to any workflow, we can see that the tool sets available to us changes and confirms to the workflow that we have chosen. Just to the right of the workflow dropdown, we have the Quick Access Toolbar. This toolbar contains a few handy tools that is needed quickly during the course of the design. Tools like Open, Save, Save Settings, Undo, Redo, etc. can be found here by default. Just below the Quick Access Toolbar, we can find the ribbon. Most of the tools that we will use can be found within this ribbon. Towards the top right of the window, we can see the Search Ribbon field. We can use this input field to search for any tool within the ribbon. For example, line. Towards the bottom of the screen, we have AccuDraw, Active View Group, Flow Selector and Flow Manager, and Grids. We will see more about these tools while building our model. The best way to start an architectural model is by creating spaces for the different rooms and or area in the building. That would help us conceptualize the building before we actually start designing it.
there are a few ways to place a space. Let's first see the Space tool. Clicking the Space tool opens up the Create Space window. Here we can see that there are a lot of space types available to be placed. For this example, let us use the Gross Area Space. There are quite a few number of attributes that are available for the space that we are about to place. However, for this example, we are interested in the top few. We have Label, which in this case is Gross Area, Space Number, Label 2 if required, Ceiling Height for the space, Program Area, which is the area planned for the space, and the Actual Area, which is populated after the space is placed based on the actual area of the space. In the placement options, we can see that we have many options to place the space by. For this example, let us choose Draw Rectangle. While drawing the rectangle, we can see the actual area of the space we are creating from the live feedback. This helps us to get close to the program area as much as possible. After the space is placed, from the space label, we can identify that we have placed a gross area space with program area of 100 square meter and actual area of 100.55 square meters. If we have an area sheet created in Microsoft Excel, we can import that as a space program and place spaces from that as well. That helps us to move from concept to design very easily. As you can see, we have placed a number of spaces using the Space Program tool. However, for the sake of simplicity in this example, we will use only two of these spaces. So let us remove the other spaces. To do that, we can right press, that is right click and hold on the space that we want to remove and click Delete. We can also select the space and press the Delete button on the keyboard. Now, let us save this model and press Ctrl plus W to close the DGN. Next, we are going to create the structural elements for this model in a different file. So, let us click on the New File button and name the new file MyBuilding underscore Struck. Once we save it, the new file opens up. Once the file opens, we will attach the architecture file as a reference to this model. Once done, a double click on the mouse wheel will fit the view and by zooming out a bit, we can see that the spaces are a bit far away from the ACS of this model. To rectify that, we will right press on the spaces and click Move Reference. Then we will select a reference point for moving the attachment and then we can click on the ACS center to place it at that location. Alternatively, while the Acudraw is active, we can press P on the keyboard to enter a point. Then we select single point by pressing P on the keyboard again and then we have the option to enter absolute coordinates of the destination point. We can either enter 0, 0 or just enter comma comma and press enter to denote the absolute origin of the model. The reference will be moved to the required location. Now we right click to exit the tool, expand this view and do a control plus shift plus right click to get this menu from which we can select top view to apply top view to this view. The next step is to create the floors for this project. The floors that we will create now will be available throughout the project. We will create the floors using the Floor Manager. In the Floor Manager, we have the building template. Then we have a site within which we already have a building created. There can be only one site in a project. So in our case, we will create a new building called My Building. Then we will add floors in that. First, we will add a floor for the footing top at an elevation of minus 1500 mm. Then the ground floor with 0 mm elevation and then the roof level with an elevation of 3000 mm. Once we apply the new floors, in the floor selector, we will be able to see our building with all the floors available. Now if we change the floor by double clicking on a floor in the floor selector, we can see that the ACS grids are moving based on the selected elevation. As we select the ground floor, we can see that there is a structural grid visible which does not conform to our design. So we will create a new grid for the purpose. We will open the Grid Systems tool and add an orthogonal grid and name it My Building. 
We will select my building for the building of this grid and since we want to apply this grid to all the floors of my building, we will select footing top for the start floor and roof for the end floor. Now for the horizontal grid lines, we can see that we need only three grid lines. So we remove two of the grids and use spacing 5000 which is the Y dimension of these spaces. Similarly for the vertical ones, we can see that we need only two. So we remove the other ones. The dimension here would be 7000. Now we can see the grid looking like the spaces and when we select our floors in the preview, we can see the grid preview. Once we click apply, we can see multiple grids in our model. To rectify that, we set the active grid to the grid system that we had created, that is, my building. Now we can see the correct grid. Now we will create the footings. To do that, we will first go to the footing top level and then from the references, turn off the visibility of the reference. Then we will select the column tool. From the place column tool, we will select type as concrete column and then rectangular column for the item. Then for the section, we will create a new section. The code is work set. Dimensions are thousand by thousand. We select the place by method as grid and length to be 250. Also, we provide a base offset of minus 250 so that the footing top surface is coplanar with the selected level. Then we select the grid and click outside to accept the selection. The footings are placed. In a similar fashion, we can create columns of 400 by 400 from the footing to the ground level. Now we go to the ground floor level and select the beam tool to place beams. We select the type to be concrete and the item to be rectangular beam. For the section, we select from library. The code is concrete, type is rectangular shapes and the section name is RB250 by 400. We turn on automatic end trim so that the ends are trimmed when they encounter any other interfering member. By selecting the place by as grid, we select the grid and click outside to accept the selection. The beams are created. However, the longer beams are not trimmed by the intermediate columns. So to rectify that, we will remove these beams and place beams by two point method and right click to exit. Now the frame is complete. We can place the ground floor columns by grid now. After that, we will place the floor slabs for this. In this example, we will place slabs by boundary. For that purpose, we will select the intersection AccuSnap for proper selection of corners. Once that is done, we can go to the side view and then copy the slabs and beams to the roof floor. While placing the copied element, we can provide the direction and press enter to log that. Then type the distance, which in this case is 3000 and then press enter to log that as well. Then we can click anywhere and the elements will be placed at the required location. Now we will close this file by pressing Ctrl plus W. Then we will open the architecture file. Let's place a smart line around the spaces. Then we will go to the wall tool. From the place wall window, we select the item as default exterior wall. Then we place the wall by from element and select the smart line. After the wall is created, we remove the smart line. To select the smart line, we place the mouse cursor on the edge and right click until the smart line is highlighted. Then we click to select the smart line and remove it. We go to the wall tool once again and this time we select the type default interior wall. We select place by line and create the interior wall between the two spaces. Then right click to exit. Note that the interior wall has a height of 2700 because the height of the spaces was so. The ceiling will be at 2700 and 300 will be the plenum height. Now we will place the ceiling. We select slab and select the item as ceiling plasterboard. We go to the roof level and give the ceiling a base offset of minus 320. 300 being the offset of the ceiling and 20 being the thickness. We use the flood method and place the ceilings. Now let us place some doors. To do that, we go to the door tool and select an item. We select a wall to place the door on, then select a position and then a direction. Once done, we can right click to exit. Here, we would like to place another door in the interior wall, but our view is blocked by the ceiling. To rectify that, we can select the ceiling, right press and click level off. 
This will turn off the level containing that ceiling. Once done, we can turn that back on from the level manager. Now we can go to the door tool, select a single flush door and place it on that wall. Windows can be placed in a similar fashion from the window tool. Once done, we will close this file. Now we will create another file called mybuilding underscore master. Once the file opens, we will select the ground floor of our building from the floor manager. Then we will go to the references and add the structural file as our first reference. In the reference attachment properties dialog under the nested attachments, we can select live nesting with depth one, since this file also has the architectural file referenced. However, the display is turned off for that. We can turn that on, but for this example, we will add the architecture file separately as a reference to this file. So, we add another reference and this time select the architecture file. We click OK with the default options. As we have noted earlier, the architecture file is far away from the origin, so we can move that back to the origin as we had done earlier. This method of working in different files for different disciplines and then combining them all into one single master file is called a federated approach. Now we can create drawing views from this file. For this example, we will create a plan view. From the drawing production tab of the ribbon, we can select plan callout for that purpose. For this example, let us select arc flow plan for the seed and check on create drawing. Then we place the callout for the plan. After that is done, in the Create Drawing window, we can provide the required scales for the model and the annotation. In this example, we are keeping the annotation at full size for the sheet while the detail is scaled at 1 to 1000. This should surely create huge annotations with respect to the drawing. We click OK and the drawings are created. As we had predicted earlier, in the sheet, the annotations are not scaled properly because we did not apply the scale while creating the view. That was a short overview of working with Open Buildings Designer. Thank you for your attention. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.